Hi, and welcome to the Science Fantasy Experience, and to Behind the Mask. When I think about the 1980s, and I think about a certain intellectual property, this one is nigh on perfect. Personally, I think it is possibly perfect. I can barely fault it, and you know, the, the one thing I'll that I think is at fault, I'll get addressed to in the video, but it's so minor. But for me, the thing that I think is nigh on perfect is mask. Mobile Armoured Strike Command, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Not only did it have an incredible toy line, it had an awesome cartoon with one hell of an intro but it had merchandise, you know, you've got comic books, you've got lunch boxes, you've got bedspreads, you've got all of the toys, the whole thing in its entirety makes this property just incredibly awesome and fantastic. Just from the opening of the theme tune, you just know you're in for the wildest ride so let's get a blast of the intro roll vt i've only wanted to say that for like ever oh my god it's it's just absolutely incredible from that opening linear picture of boulder hill and you get to see all the Incredible vehicles from Thunderhawk to Switchblade. You get to see Scott and T-Bob. And you get to see a little bit of Hurricane. So Hurricane was in the intro, and yet it didn't appear until way later in the show after Hundo McLean's original vehicle gets destroyed and he gets given Night Stalker, obviously it became Hurricane on the toy shelves. But yeah, everything about this intro from the sound effects to the music to the lyrics to the imagery that they used, it's just, it's absolutely phenomenal. So much so that it became the inspiration for Figure Force and one of our intros. Back when Smuzno joined Figure Force and Borders Dude was part of our little ensemble, we had an intro. So again, cue the music. Obviously, got to give a huge shout out to Junkie Dave, Dave Shotton, for creating such an incredible intro for our group of YouTube collectors who review toys and bring nostalgia to the forefront. But as I said, it's very much the whole part of the IP that everything that came together. So let's take a look at the toys. So for me, my introduction to Mask was getting Condor, the green motorcycle that turned from the motorcycle into a chopper, a helicopter. I, back when I was seven, I guess, 1985, I won a £5 gift voucher for WH Smith for designing the front cover of the school's Summer Fate programme. And on the Friday, um, before the actual summer fate, I got given this WH Smith voucher. 
I'm figuring that the school decided to choose WH Smith because it was a well-respected place to get books and stationery and very scholastic bits and pieces. So I figure they wanted us to, you know, get something like that, pick up an encyclopedia or, you know, one of those Oxford English stationery sets, which nobody ever, like, used. You know, I've got various qualifications in art and design, and yet, like, I never used any of it. I probably used a compass, like, twice. But anyway, I digress. So I get given this £5 voucher, and, you know, as soon as I get home from school, like, I show my parents and I wave it around, and I'm like, yeah, like, five pounds. And is at that moment that my parents, like, say, well, let's jump in the car and let's go to town and go and get something. And I'm like, whoa, what, like, on a school night? And I'm like, this is incredible, because I never went to, like, Wolverhampton Town Centre at all after school. I only ever went on Saturdays. And obviously back in the 80s, everything was shot on a Sunday. But like we went after school, so that was a treat in itself. And it was a Friday, so my dad often finished work early. So it was a real family outing. I get into WH Smith and I see a giant wall of red and yellow the mask packages everywhere. I say a giant wall, it was probably only about like four foot high, but they were just plastered everywhere. And I'd been watching the cartoon, and I'm sure my parents probably wanted me to pick up a, like a colouring book or something interesting, but no. I wanted Condor, and there it was, and it was £4.45. The full amount of like what I could get with that voucher. So that was my first foray into Mask, picking up Condor. And I played with it a lot. And it wasn't until I think a good six months later or even a year later that I got another Mask vehicle. And I had a few throughout the years. I had Raven and Manta and I had a couple of the split seconds. But one I never got was Hurricane, the one that I'd seen in the intro. I just never saw it in the shops at all. And I was kind of desperate for it because I was a huge lover of cars and especially American muscle cars as a kid. So to get Hurricane was like the dream for me, but I just, it didn't happen. As you can see, luckily enough, I was able to pick it up at a toy fair last year, back at the NEC in February, I think. And I saw it there and I was just like, that was my opportunity to get it and get some mask back in the collection. I have Rhino. I always wanted Rhino as a kid, but that was the top echelon. Very expensive toy at the time. That was never gonna happen. But now I have Rhino and I have the elusive Hurricane. In terms of the toys though, this is the one thing that does not make it perfect. And that was the fact of not being able to get Gloria Baker's shark. They just didn't make it ever. There was this thing in the 80s where certain female characters just didn't get made. Luckily we got Vanessa Warchild and her car Manta the subsequent year in the following wave but you didn't get her white Porsche and that's what makes it just that not that little bit perfect everything else fantastic but let's play devil advocate when you become an adult collector things like this happen somebody comes along and creates the most incredible custom. They get a Porsche model, add some extra bits to it, create the artwork and the box, and you have got an addition to your collection. 
that possibly would have never ever happened. Some of the fans of most 80s nostalgic properties do great custom work and this is just one of the best I've seen out there. I just I just think it's fantastic and maybe it is perfect because it now evokes this nostalgia and the possibilities are endless with you know laser technology that we can create these toys that we didn't have back then. Let's actually take a look at the toy in question, the Hurricane. Come join me on the floor for some rug time. It's been a while. So here is Hurricane with Hondo McLean and Blaster 2 mask. Let's have a look at Hondo first. As you can see, it's a much smaller scale. It's the four inch scale. And I am hopefully right in thinking that this is one of the first releases because the mask is much smaller. And you just pop the mask off and then you get to see Hondo. And considering it's so small, there's still a lot of detail and there is a facial likeness to the cartoon. It's a great likeness to him. And then you get a little bit of detailing all the way through the belt. You know, random computer buttons, the holster. You get the articulation of bends at the knee and the legs. There's no waist swivel, but you get two arms moving, and I believe the head does move. So yeah, you got a tiny bit of articulation when it comes to the figure. So that is Hondo. But the main attraction is Hurricane. As I said, it's a 57 Chevy. And I think the mask vehicles, I'm not entirely sure what scale they are, but they are, it's not there, they're not super deformed or anything. They are pretty close to a scaled down model of actual vehicles. You know, from the detail on the spare wheel to the headlights to the Chrysler logo blacked out windows it looks like something out of American Graffiti I absolutely love it but what makes Mask so incredible is the fact that the toys convert into armoured vehicles or another different bit you know Condor goes from a motorcycle to a helicopter this becomes a tank and to get it into that mode you literally flip up the top which releases a laser cannon flip up the dual lasers from the top on the shield and then twist to release an extra set of wheels but there is more to come. The headlights pop out to give you even more firepower. A futuristic looking display pops up from the bumper. The mask logo is revealed. And you get a buzzsaw at the back. As you can see, there's extra detailing with some stickers of some wires, a radar, readouts, and you also have pegs to peg in Hondo McLean and have him firing the dual laser. And you also get some extra sticker detailing and more of that electronic readout.
it's just a stunning example of the first wave of mask vehicles. So much chrome everywhere. On the front, on the wheels. I think it's just an absolutely stunning piece. And finally, like any good mask vehicle, it has a projectile weapon. So that was just a little bit of my experience of mask. I would love to know some of your experiences with that toy line and cartoon or whether you had the lunchbox. Let me know in the comments section below. You know, part of me wants Mask to make a return. Not necessarily in the realms of a live action movie, but the fact that Hasbro bought out Kenner in the early 90s, I'd like to think that down in the depths of Hasbro in the vault, in the archives, there is the blueprints for all the original Mask toys and I'd love for them to revisit and re-release them. The fact that they've done a vintage line for Star Wars, they every year they bring out G1 Transformers, you know, whenever there's an anniversary of G.I. Joe, there's always a couple of vintage pieces that get re-released. You know, the AWE Striker has been released countless times and the Hiss, I just think, there's so many adult collectors that would be ready to see Mask back on the shelves. I would, for sure. I've been Rudy Sissy. And as COVID-19 continues to ravage this world, stay safe, stay home, stay strong. Thanks for watching.